it's the waiting and not like, okay, hello, it's Jane. I think we are live. I'm just waiting for the screen to pop up. How are you? It's a glorious day here in Byron Bay. Sunday, is it the third? Four, third, third December, right? In Australia. Oh, and I've streaming just a little bit earlier like I did yesterday because I have just guests and things happening in my life. So we do the art around the life sometimes. Sometimes the art is the life. It just depends on the day, right? So today in Advent calendar, which is the celebration of uh, a year in art supplies, <laughs> it's been a busy year. We have Arabesque Brush Ballet, which is this gorgeous collection of brushes, which are especially for acrylic paint. You can use them for whatever you like. But as I'll explain, acrylic paint is tough, 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 tough on brushes. And especially on your watercolor brushes or brushes that are more suited to watercolor. And acrylic uh, just shortens the life of any brush just by its very nature. So these brushes will just enhance the acrylic experience uh, as well as preserve your watercolour brushes for longer. And I'll show you the other sets as well. So that just means I'm going to be painting with acrylic paint today, I think, is what that means. Okay, so if you are in the chat, let me know and I can... Um, just let me know if everything's clear and feeling good and are you arting along with me? That's what I want to know. And I found these pages as well from previous years. So, so this is from 2021. This is all the different art supplies that <laughs> we came out with in 2021. This was 2022 and also my collaborations with Creative Expressions. And, oh, that was last year. I, I thought, oh, I missed out. I didn't put my little unicorn brush, little dust brush on the art then calendar. It wouldn't have had room for just it. But anyway, I'm going to keep it out there. I've got myself a new one there. And then this year we've had, this is a condensed thing, but there's a lot going on. Oh, at all times. What beeped at me? I don't even know. Um, hey Derby, hey Bianca, how are you going? Right, so, and I know that um, there are some uh, of you that have always followed me on the Facebook live streams, but the quality here is just better now. There's no doubt about it. So Angus is here helping uh, moderate. Um, hopefully there'll be no need for that, but you know, you never know. Right, I'm going to go to the art, I think. Hey Michelle, how are you going? Okay, so these are the uh, 11 brushes, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 12 brushes in the arabesque set and they come with this little wrap. So this is, I actually mainly use this for when I'm washing them and pop them on there when they're drying. But of course you can travel with these like so it's just to help keep them all nice and safe and especially to get to you so it's like a little gift with purchase more than anything um, depending on how you use it I have my brushes all out so this is the brush bay and uh, it's got different little sections here I'll just lift these ones out so I can show you you can actually lift this whole middle part out if you really don't want the sections and without the sections in there you would fit more brushes but they just wouldn't be organized so less brushes more organization oh she needs to be washed this is what I'm talking about if you don't completely wash the acrylic out of the brush you know how it goes just stiffens it up over time it gets harder and harder to get all of that out um, so it just shortens the lifespan of the brush. So in my um, brush bay, I've got, oh, a pen that shouldn't be there, should be over there. Uh, the 
uh, on point set. Oh my gosh, I couldn't get my words out. Uh, we have the pirouette set, which has all different tips. This is all um, what's called rounds, but it has that, go into that nice little fine point when they're wet. And then they've got a you know, nice big belly there like that. So you can put lots of uh, paint and whatever in there. Uh, then I've also got the arabesque set, which is um, has got the A on there for acrylic, just to help you remember. I've also got the Ontour brush set. So these are rounds as well, but they're a slightly different shape. They're a different bristle. You can travel with these. I'll just show you that little trick. And they come with a cute little pouch. All cruelty free. Different sizes of everything. I've got the skinny mini brushes and um, my ink depth water brushes and a few others in the middle and my other mermaid brushes as well mm. and that just gives me access to all my brushes right there i've got a huge collection of other brushes i just don't use them anymore um i just just they I get everything i need pretty much from what i've got Okay, so I don't need this, I'm going to pop that away. But how cute's the lilac? And then, actually, I will just quickly grab the other two sets. Sorry, I had to, oh, there's been paintbrushes have spilled. This is the pirouette set in its little house like so. And you've got room in the brush holders, in the wraps, for other brushes or whatever else you want to put in there. So should, we'll wrap her up, because look how cute they all are together. I'm all about the colour. Why can't the brush, the art supplies look as lovely as what you want to create, huh? And then this is the on point set with the beautiful blue handles, the aqua blue wrap, just gorgeous, okay. And you can mix them, you can put them all in one wrap if you want to. But look, <gasps> oh, satisfaction. <laughs> Pop them back there. Now, what else, the other things that I'll need, I'll need a little palette if I'm going to be doing acrylic, because I'll probably put some paint colors out here. This is what we were playing with yesterday with the Gods of Monsters Inc, and I've got the watercolor gesso underneath and on this side why don't we use the acrylics and we'll do the the mirror image I've pulled out these colors this is the joyful gesso and the joyful gesso you can just use as an acrylic paint as well so you can it functions as a gesso obviously which means it's an ultra matte paint that's fabulous for backgrounds and the thing to remember with acrylic is that acrylic loves acrylic. It also loves to be told what to do. Unlike watercolour, watercolour and water media, it's a little bit of a, it's a collaboration. The uh, watercolour doesn't really feel like it needs to be told. It has its own ideas. Acrylic, it's a team player. It's a team player. <laughs> so I might get a bit of a skin tone down. I'm just going to go in with a mid skin tone. This is a colour called Skipper Beat Sienna. So all of the colours are named for happiness, joy, that sort of thing. Okay, so I could put the acrylic straight on here. And this is just watercolour paper. Uh, it's not mine. It would be just a, a big, it's from a big sheet of watercolour paper. And I'm going to be using my acrylic brushes of course not sure if you'll be able to see them maybe I'll pull them all out here seeing as we've we're celebrating them today and they've got different we've got brights which are this sort of or a flat which is this um, so the great thing about a oh, we'll talk about that after I'll just get this little bit of coverage down and then we can talk about things. Back off brushes, what are you doing? Now normally 
uh, I have my sponge next to me, but I don't tend to use that with acrylic because if I, if I don't wash it out soon enough, I can harden up that brush. So and I just want a damp brush, not too wet in this first instance. And I'm just going to go in. I've already got a little bit of watercolor or something else here. And yesterday I did spray this has got Gods and Monsters ink happening here already. Actually, I might just go right over the eyes. I really do want to get, oh good, this is gonna dry very quickly, so that's good. And I might just take her face the whole way. I'm gonna mix in uh, some other colors as well. So I've had a few different acrylic paints over time. Uh, we've had the charismatic paints, that was super matte. Even my very first ones, because I use matte paint myself because it's just much easier to use pencil, watercolour, everything else over the top of it as well. I might just put in a slightly darker colour. So that was Positive Peach and this is High Kicks Caramel. So these you can all use as a background colour as well, like a gesso, but, well, we're going to be using it like a, a gesso actually, but it's just going to be face gesso. <laughs> I'm going to go right over her mouth as well, and I might give her a little bit of an ear and the rest of her jaw. And I'm not putting too much care into how I'm painting this. But I do have these lighter areas around the brow bone, the cheekbone, the jawbone, uh, down the nose here. So I am, I've got a little bit of planning in there. Let's also give her a neck, but I'll get into the darker colour here. Actually, I need a little bit more. And then we can do all sorts of other things later. So actually, do I even want her neck there? Do I want them to mirror each other or? Well, I don't know yet. So I will put, I'll give her a full neck. Just getting. Yeah, okay. I'm sort of just trying to give myself as many opportunities as I can as this develops. And I do want to make sure I get coverage here so that if I add watercolour or other things, it doesn't go sneaking through the paper um, and create different blotches. So I do want to get. all the paper covered but I'll, I might leave it loose on this side so she sort of is disappearing off in the mist like this girl sort of disappearing off uh, in the mist and then that can dry and then seeing as we're doing that and we're talking about acrylic and jewelry let's do a little bit of something something in the background but I might <sighs> let me Think, let me plan, let me plan. So I've got the white. Am I gonna, maybe I'll just make this full blown colour on this side. Why not? I feel colourful. Okay. And I'm wearing a pink shirt, so I may as well get paint all over it. I'm just going to put a little bit of paint here and there. Uh, I might do a few different colours. And I'll keep it in these softer colours. Oh, that was a big blob. Okay. Just dampen my brush. So I've just dabbed it in the water and then just wafting it off there. And I might add a bit of white in there too. Uh, I'll put the white on my palette so I can dip into it there. And I've also got a few little beiges. It is very hot and dry, so I'm just going to give it a little misting just to keep it a little fresh for longer. And... Then 
off we go. And I'm even going to pop in a little bit of clear medium to help that paint uh, spread a little. It, sort of, it makes it slick but not shiny. I might leave the paper as her hair. Let's see what we get. How gorgeous is this colour? This is the new Peppy Purple. It's only really just come out. And this sort of fits in with those background colours as well. Uh, Gus, could you let people know in the Facebook group that... Um, Oh, thank you. That's why I'm live. Because I'm, I'm not... And on my Facebook page. And maybe do the link to the channel. To the YouTube. Thank you. Just because we're doing things a little differently, I have to keep letting people know I'm not where you think I'm going to be. So I'm going to take this right to the edge, to the top. And let's take it right to the edge here. But I might leave it as a little rough edge coming, coming down here and uh, I might just use a different brush. I'll just wash that one out. What have I got in here? And where I've kept this as um, a white, I might actually add her hair on here. So let's do all, we'll, we'll have an acrylic surface basically. Now this paint, is, this paper rather, is quite absorbent. Uh, this is not one of mine. This is a, a watercolour uh, paper, like I said. Um, it doesn't behave very much like watercolour paper. But we can work around anything. But if I give it all the same surface, then when I go to create whatever it is that we're going to create on it, I'm not getting surprises, but because it's quite absorbent, if I have a watery gesso layer, it's not really going to cover the paper enough. So I'm still going to get the ink and whatnot could still sneak through. I quite like her white hair. I'm just going to bring that up into there. Oh, I quite like having a little bit of that beige in there too. Hmm, okay. So this was, with, remember yesterday I sprayed through the stencil. It's one of the new uh, stencils. So these are part of my collaboration with Creative Expressions. The brushes you can only get on my website because they're one of our special things. But these you can get where Creative Expressions are, and that's the stencil that I used, which, of course, is on my website as well. Right. And every time I do something, someone will usually ask where in America or where in the UK or where in wherever, you know, wherever you are from, um, can I get, you know, the brushes, the layer cake, la, la. They're only available on my website. And I love that that's, I can do that. And we send all over the world every day. Well, every working day, let's say. And because uh, we can't send out on weekends, so the post office is that. I'm just using up the little remnants of paint that are, that would otherwise just dry. And may as well use them, right? Let's not waste anything. <laughs> Might pop even some of these in here too. Why not? Oh, I've managed to sprinkle a bit of paint on her face. Oh, we've got blue freckles now, gorgeous. But well, we've got a, an acrylic base uh, here. 
oh, I've had enough time, I would actually go in and give that a little bit more of a pop. Oh, I might do that. Let's just give that a little hit and ask me some questions. I'll hold this away from us. Oh, Debbie got her Medusa art foamy today. I love the Medusa. Let me have a look. Now, normally I wouldn't use a heat gun to dry the paint. It's just because we're in a live and you know, I want to keep things moving for you. Get that nice and dry. We are going to have such a hot day today. I'm so lucky I've got my two nieces when they're meeting for the first time. They're so gorgeous. So lovely to see beautiful people growing up and just becoming, well they've always been lovely people, but just becoming even lovelier. <laughs> this is cool. Right, so I've just given that a little clean off as well and I'm just giving these a bit of a swish, swish, swish as we go. And I always have two uh, glasses of water. So these are pickle jars and I don't know why I have the two different sizes. It doesn't really matter, but I've put the, about the water about a third up. If there's any higher and I rattle my brush in it, I tend to splash it everywhere like I just did there. And uh, I put my, the stickers on it. These are the Painty Water stickers that we have in the store. Then, you know, just funny thing, Mermaid at Work, Parker Brush. See, it's just to help you not put your brush in your drink. So I've always got them sitting off to the side. I usually have one that I'm working in that gets really mucky, especially if I've got acrylic. So I just try and keep the acrylic water in this one or whichever one and uh, I took them out into the garden at the end of every session. It's, n it's not dangerous for the plants when it's not too uh, built up like that. Uh, what hasn't certainly hasn't harmed any of my plants. Some of them have got a bit of colour on them from time to time, but that washes off in the rain. Um, but look at these beautiful colours so far. Okay, so we're pretty dry here, and I think we can. One of my favourite things on the planet is on the planet is drawing with coloured pencil on. Acrylic. Now, what I might do is put a little something over her so I don't keep making a mess of her. It's too late to avoid making a mess of her completely. <laughs> so I've got four sets of coloured pencils here. Uh, they're all called Magic Wands. What are you? Who are you? I don't know who you are. You go over there. Uh, and these were two pencils that I got in Japan. So I'll just, I might take them out of that uh, area because they don't belong. But they came with sharpeners on the top. I thought that was pretty cool. Speaking of sharpeners, I'll just make sure I've got mine handy. Where for art thou sharpener? Behind the unicorn and I will make sure I've got my unicorn here too. So this is a little dust brush. Oh she's got a dirty face. Little dust brush for crumbs and whatnot. So I've got her there. I've got, I might also have some of my razors handy because if you are creating with acrylic you can erase a coloured pencil when it's on acrylic paint. Uh, and I've got gorgeous little erasers that are shaped like my books. And I collected erasers as a kid. We called them rubbers in Australia. So I'm going to have, I'm gonna just make sure I've got those sitting here as well. But I'm just in show off mode, showing you all the cute things. And this is our to the point pencil sharpener. It's a wonderful thing. It's got the two holes there for the two different types of sharpenings. Now I might just do a quick little tidy up. Pop that, leave that there so we remember what it is that we've used. 
and I put my paints upside down so they're ready to for the paint to come pouring out even as they get lower and lower. Oh, this colour. This is the new wonderful wisteria. Divine. Right. I've finished procrastinating now. <laughs> so I've got four sets of pencils, the original magic ones, the Pharaoh set, the um Oh, the Country Garden set, which is all the flower colours. And the Skin Care set, which is more of the skin care colours. Skin colours. I'm just going to grab a few out. Um, and I've got various ones from the various sets here. So I'm just picking a few. And there's a colour called Lionfish. No, it's not. Uh, that's it in the watercolours. It's Lionfish and it's Claret in this one. Oh, actually, seti. Hmm, yes. So this is like a, a ready brown. I'm just using this to just start with a little bit of definition, just nice and loose. Everything is forgiven in a sketch. And I'm getting that lovely... Scritchy, scratchy, scritchy, scratchy sound. Oh, I might change to a different colour for her hair. Oh, this is still a little bit wet. It's just, unless it's bone dry, a coloured pencil just, the pigment just can't stick to it and you can feel it straight away. You, can use your watercolour pencils, the water ones, a little bit earlier because they've just got that different type of surface, a different type of personality, let's say, that allow them to be used just a little bit earlier than these. But they don't have, they're, they're just, they're a different type of creature. Oh, I like it over this over here. This is still drying as well. Hey Heather from Georgia, hey Pania from New Zealand. Hello Cheryl. Mm. So, yeah, so if you've got any questions for me, it doesn't have to necessarily be about what I'm showing you, but just um, sort of art related questions really. <laughs> Not world questions, although I will try my hardest. But, uh. might not have the answers that you need. So I do have the stencil underneath her. I think her eyes were higher. I think I can see that there, but I'm just going off what I'm looking at here. Even... Come back, where are you off to? Uh, this is a colour called Eclipse. And I'm pressing very lightly because that I, I, I don't need to press any harder because of the amount of pigment and just the formula of this pencil. Tess was wondering if you use Gamsol? Um, Gamsol I don't think you can use on acrylic uh, because it's got like out of uh, that oily base so um, I have used it in the past, but no, not, ne not no, I don't. Um, I know it's a lovely thing for blending, and but it's just not something that I um, use, really. Now, this is my trashed brush with fame. That's why it's got the T on it. I've got, you know, a pristine one as well. Gotta say, I use the trashed one all the time because it's just got this uh, <laughs> more irregular mark because it's trashed. Like I've dragged the poor thing from hither to beyond, and this has just got a, a liquid um, acrylic ink in it, and it's the non-shake type. So it's the paint over pen type of paint pen. So the other ones I have that are like this are the Day at the Beach paint pens. I might even use this one as well. 
little bit of this white. This is a soft white. If I want really opaque white paint pen, nothing beats the musical markers. So there's, these come in a set of three as well. One, two. Mm, that's actually not it there. Where's the other one? Anyway. Oh, there she is. No. Oh, mystery. Uh, but anyway, there's a set of three different sizes in them, but it's all the same um, ink in those, and you shake them up. They're the most opaque. You can see how these are a soft white, which means I can build that up and it's just not as, especially with eyes, if I make the white of the eye too white, the eyes start to look cut out and pasted on, I feel. Just talking about my own artwork, not, not anyone else's. And this just gives me an opportunity to have a softer white um, before I go in with uh, anything more intense because I can always build that up. It's like starting off rather than going, I really go straight in with the colour black because there's just nowhere to go after that. I mean, that is it's as dark as you can get. Uh, so I rather would use other dark colours to, and then that adds volume and then get into the, the darkest colour of all at the very end. So that can be, it's the piece de resistance. That was the most horrible pronunciation of anything on the planet, but <laughs> you know what I was trying to say. You had a question about your creative style, is that my creative style. Okay, oh, I like this, yes. So how much of the finished girl do you see in your creative mind and how much are you led by responding to how you paint from that book? Oh, but, yeah, oh, oh, that's very nice. Yeah. I'll, I'll just start, uh, read that out loud. Um, I wonder if I can show that on the... Um, I'm going to pin that message, Wild Rose. Uh, so she asks, when you are creating... Um, how much of the finished girl do you see in your creative mind and how much is led by responding uh, how your paints bring natural flight your stars so mm -hmm. <sighs> it's not amazing but I don't see um, I like to th I think that all of these people live in my pencils I don't know who they are they just fall out of my pencils and brushes this one is a little bit although she's from obviously an original drawing is a stencil that fell out from a drawing or a painting, probably from a live stream, um, that has come out of just intuition. Uh, sometimes I might pre-visualise something, but that would be rare. That would be rare and probably would be that when I'm doing a book or doing preparing a lesson for one of my workshops where I'm wanting to teach something specific. So I might do that when I'm teaching um, a little bit more because I, I might have a particular goal of a particular uh, creative technique that I want to share. So that would be one of the only times that I'm thinking of what I might do. Oh, I've got my little Zorro with me now. Now I'm just going to use my, this is, I call this the symmetry grid. You can use this as a giant stamp pad. It's not pad, sorry, it's stamp block. You know, the clear acrylic stamps that I have and they're cling stamps and they, they can be put on there and stamped down. Um, and it's got the, the check on there so that you can line things up if you have perfectionitis. Many of us do. Oh, do I have it? I have it in some things, not in others. But, oh, and I've got paint on it. I need to get that off. Um, what I use this for is just to uh, just check my alignments before I get too far. So I just need to work out what is the alignment of her face. What's the angle so that I can get her nose, her nose rather, her eyes and her mouth on the same sort of angle and I can help get those eyes even. They don't have to be perfect, but it's nice if they're in the same hemisphere, right? So if I line this under her eyes as they exist, um, I can just pre-visualise um, a little bit of her, 
her mouth is going to be on this line. So I don't, what I tend to find after teaching hundreds, thousands of people with drawing, when we're drawing on a tilt, very often our brain tries to help us and level things out with the paper. So we might start off with the eyes at the tilt and then the nose comes down, not quite, it starts to become horizontal. And then by the time we get to the mouth, it's like this, so we get this sort of banana face. And it just I've just seen, I do it, and I've seen a lot, a lot, a lot of other people do it. So this is just a little tool to help me with my alignment so I just don't have to redraw everything. Um, I think that's okay. This is that her mouth will be fine. But if I have her mouth here, so let's get her little cupid's uh, little lip dip under here. We've got that cupid's bow, so her mouth is going to be wrapping around. This will be her lips. Her lips really can come to. Um, if you have a look under your uh, your own face, your eye. If I just show you me, horrible as it may be. Um, Here's a corner of my mouth coming up into where the eye is. So you can always use your own face uh, as a little bit of a guide. But I've whimsified the face a bit too. Her eye is huge. Uh, usually the features are all about the same on a face, uh, just as a general guide. Um, and, but I do tend to have smaller mouths, big eyes. So that starts to, like if I'm making the mouth small and the eye bigger, they're going to become further apart. So I'm just talking out loud as we go. And one of the reasons I do is I've got to leave room in here for shading and for building a little bit of depth. And what I can see here is I'm, I haven't got much, she hasn't got much of a chin. So these are the sorts of things I can make changes to now. So I need, I want to swing her head out a little bit there. I want to give her a bit more of a cheekbone. And come back out and then into a little bit more of a chin. Just, and that's going to be a bit more of a realistic proportion. And with my eraser, I'm going to erase some of these lines. <laughs> Just because of the way erasers are, they can leave a little bit of an impervious layer. Now, I might not be able to erase all of this. I think the brown will move. Let's see. But I did start off with that pinky purple. And look, how I think it's attached itself to that drying acrylic. So that's not going to come off. Definitely don't want to uh, try and erase on acrylic that hasn't set. I'll just make it a horrible mess. And then rather you then use my hand to brush that off or blow on it, which is my natural thing that I want to do. When you blow things, you've got spittle coming out and that can go on your drawing. So if we get used to using a little duster brush, that just will just help keep things and it's very nice. It feels like you're going onto a, a little blank slate again. And if it's super cute like that, you could use anything. But that's what I use. <laughs> the, the unicorn. Rose, rose pink with a pink muzzle and uh, rainbowish Trojan mane. So now I've got this little extra bit there. So what I could do is just add a little bit more acrylic paint. So I'm just going to use, this is positive, this is skip a beat. This is when we started with at the very beginning. Should be about the right colour. Um, don't need much. It's just like a little infill. And then I'm going to, oh, this is a dry brush. I haven't wet it, so that I can fluff it in, fuzz it in to the rest of the painting and it should just disappear. And I just have to wait for it to dry, but it should just, if, uh, because if, I, if it's wet and I, I get more precise edges, but if I'm fluffing it in like so, I'm getting a very little bit of paint and I'm just 
doing a little fuzzy fuzzy and even doing it this like the way I'm doing it there I'm getting very little paint so I can just fuzz that in and I will just help so I don't get um, a line and sometimes I wouldn't even bother I would just let that pencil line be where it is but I quite, I quite like her so she's uh, getting the extra little treatment and I might even bring this because this colour is a little bit warmer I'm going to bring this here's the side of her mouth coming up to the top of her ear and if you feel on your face where your cheekbone sits if you go to the top of your ear and come down towards your mouth you can use that's where I can feel my cheekbone so I'm going I'm going to bring that a little bit of that warmer colour and fuzz it again with this dry brush and just fuzz it in here and just start, I've got, I've been, I'm getting a little contour of her face there, just down to the corner of her mouth and I could even bring it a little bit under the chin there. Um, is there any other little places I want to add any more skin tone? Just because I've got the stuff on my brush, I'm just going to fuzz this in here and just fill in where I've just applied that paint a little bit loosely. I may as well use up my paint, right? And then to get the paint to stretch a bit further, I've just added a bit more of water. I'm just filling that in. I, I quite like it being rough there though. But not there. And now she's just got a little bit more face. So it looks a little bit like a, um, a beard at the moment, but that won't last for long. That will disappear but I do have to just remember that that is drying and setting so I'm just going to give that a little zhuzh oops and just quickly look at questions if you've got anything else hey Tanya now if you're saying hello and you're a regular and I don't know your name just sometimes remember your username on YouTube might be different to what I'm used to seeing you as on Facebook. So if I not saying your name, and I usually do, um, it's because I can't see it. <laughs> so I'm just ignoring that for a minute. Uh, this is the Unicorn White Pencil. And this is a, a soft white pencil. Again, building up. My lights and darks. And I can even add a little bit of this is waterline. Oh, innovated. Wait a minute, where is waterline? Flushed, no. Where are you, darling? Yeah, she is uh, waterline. Oh, I forgot to record. I anyway, I've recorded some, and here we are again. So I'm just adding this lovely peachy colour in as well. Could I just add a little bit on the lip? I think maybe her lips are a little bit far forward. So if this is her, her nose, and this is coming into that lip dip. Yeah, let's. We've got time to. We can make changes, and I can always. Uh, Remembering this mouth, this part of the mouth can come all the way back under the eye. But if I've exaggerated the eye, 
I'm just a little, I, I just pull back a little bit on exaggerating all the other features as well. And by giving her more chin, I've made her look more and more grown up. When she had this scooped in chin, she looked younger, like preteen, teen, and then where's the more of the chin we add, because that's how our face develops. When we're babies, we hardly have a chin. We've got that little baby face. And I might even... This is a colour called Lash Line. This is a black. And my pencil's not sharp, so I'm not going to get a really sharp edge, which is what I want. And I'm just going to come over with that dark as a dark now. Pop that away. And then, so I've got a few colours that I think I might like to use uh, in my hand. So I can just keep swapping, swapping, swapping. And the acrylic just gives me that lovely base. It's all about the base. <laughs> no treble. And um, see how I, I use my pencil in different, in different ways. So I've got it like this, then I flip it around. To, I, just, I, I haven't got as much control. So I use this when I want to do undulating lines, just hold it in a totally different way. And I have crab claw, which you would have noticed, I'm sure. I think they, you're taught to draw, paint draw like that, aren't you? You're meant to be, have a relaxed hand. And, and I'm like this, full crab claw. I used to get teased about it. And uh, um, <laughs> I didn't care, <laughs> obviously, because I still get to it. But you can't, I can't control the pencil like this. La di da di da. I have to, and I'm hunched over, and I'm. Oh no, we've got the dreaded lawnmowers going. I always laugh because if you hear one, it reminds all the other people who are sitting at home relaxing. Oh, that's right, I've got to mow the lawn. So it's usually contagious. So. <laughs> it doesn't last for long, does it? Now I'm going to get a little bit of turquoise because I just like that. And I like pink and blue together, turquoise and hot pink, the particular turquoises and blues. And we could start to think maybe about what is going on here. So I certainly haven't got any perfect lines uh, on the outside, but I do need to definitely get a bit of white or something light up there because there's something catching my eye. So I'm going to use, this is the Fluffy White Clouds pastel pencil. And you, if you're ordering something from us, you can add this into your cart uh, for free. You just have to know that it's so soft and delicious that you can't sharpen it, you must use a blade. So you can not trust me and uh, try and sharpen it yourself with a sharpener but you're just better off accepting that I know what I'm talking about and save you the bother. <laughs> but it's a, like a gift but on the proviso that you know that it's you know a little bit of a bother to sharpen it. Who have I got trip trotting down there? Is that Zozzy? Good boy, Zozzy. You okay? Hello. <gasps> Peeking out at me from under the table. Dear little man. Right, now for eyes. <sighs> See, the blue, blue would be nice because that would pick up in the background. Brown would be nice. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow because that will really pop. And the yellow I can take into being a blue eye, a green eye or a brown eye. Oh, it made me laugh. I'm going, to, I'm going to go with, maybe she'll have hazel. And maybe I won't make one a little bit greener than the other. And I'll stick to pencil. 
Uh, this is um, Fever Few. And I'll go in with a bit more of an olive green. Um, this one. Oh, no. Actually, this one. This is the Nile. This is a beautiful colour for natural green eyes. This is not natural. She's got a contact in one eye and... And now we need a little bit of highlight, actually, and a little bit more depth too. Yes, every time I someone said, um, Ev said, I enjoy seeing how you use the same base stencil, yes, like I have here, but then the drawings are so different. Well, that's one of the fabulous things. Stencils, stamps, art, new art foamies, like every time they're really a drawing aid a drawing t tool um, because they just you're going to get something different every every time you create with them so I'm starting off with this softer highlight might even bring that around here just tidy up where I've colored and then bring a little bit of a highlight over a bit of sparkle now she needs a bit more happening in the lips now i must say i don't usually use all color just color pencil on this i would my heart is saying to use layer cake so do i just listen to it i might just listen to it because i've got beautiful colors there's this they'll be quite bright though this um color is humpty from the joy of life palette one of the new ones and this colour, Maple, is from the Fall in Love palette. The funny thing is they just look like dark browns in the palette. They look quite uneven, just, you know, like browns sitting there. But when we put them on something, so I need to just get a little bit of paper. I'll show it to you. Oh, no, that's not a... I just need a little scrappity doodah. Oh, right. So this is more of a rusty colour. And this one, sorry, I was just I'm trying to read questions as well. This one is more of a pink. And this one, these are all lovely lip colours. Is We're more going into a, a red. So with these in mind, and then that's an actual beautiful brown, so I'll just pop that there too, just as well. But, oh, I think it's this one that's going to be the one. Uh, I might use a smaller brush. I might nip off. I've gone, use this brush a lot today. So this is from the brush ballet, the arabesque. It's got the A there. It's an angle, the number four angle. And the great thing about, oh, well, I'll do a proper swatch out with the brushes maybe when I do her hair maybe I should do that there um, let's use this color here and so layer cake is a water media so it's in the um, family of watercolor because it's got the gum Arabic but it's got other things too so I'm just leaving a little bit of open space that's a bit more of a natural color it might not be looking that way on camera when I look at it but I'll make that top lip a little bit neater. I'll even add a little bit more colour there. Might bring a little bit more in there. And I'll make this connecting point just a little bit uh, neater. Because this is um, a water media on acrylic, if I don't like it or if I feel that I've made the wrong shape or have made the wrong decision um i've made a mistake whatever my hand went like that when i mean it to do that um i can add water and just take it off here as long as the, the paint underneath is dry the joyful gesso can you do these tricks with other paint not always it just depends on 
I only use mine, so <laughs> I've only used mine for so long. Uh, other painters become a distant memory. I know what mine does, that's for sure. Oh, look, my brush is so fine. On its end there, I can do the lashes. Just give her some little natural brown lashes. Okay. And I'll let that dry and then I can add pencil. So I could do that with acrylic too, but I don't have those specific, I've got 80, oh, I don't, there's more than 80 colors now actually with layer cake. So I know that I've just, I've got the exact color that I need uh, sitting right there. So now what was I saying we could do? Um, hello, love. Nice to see again. So these did start off as the same stencil. I think she needs a little bit of a, I think she's a goddess. I think she might be having a wreath. I think we might have to be getting the pigment pebbles out. Fine art. So although these are acrylic brush, you can use them for, you can use them for whatever you like. They're not locked into anything. So you've got your angles. The great thing about an angle is you've got, this is used, used to be all I used, especially with acrylic, because you can do so much with it. The brush doesn't have to even leave your hand because you've got a swathe of color. So say if we, oh, I've got my little gold that I made yesterday with my, or the day before, whenever it was. I've got two different golds on there. So I've just, always with a metallic, you just need to give it a minute or two to activate it, but these are pretty, juice there so I'll just get a bit of colour so I can have um, oh should I do gold there or here I can have this fine line and then I can get that thick line just by turning the brush I'm not sure if you could see that that clearly because I'm over that lighter area so if I I'll just grab some dark paper Oh, and I don't have to be so careful with what I show you in this journal because I've, I was trying to hide the art phonies for ages. So now I can just uh, dance around in here. Yay! Did I just wash my gold out? I just did. What are you doing, Jane? So the little pigment pebbles come with these shells so you can make this little set of watercolours like mine. But this is what makes an angle brush cool is you can go like this into a little tiny thing and just keep dancing around like so arabesquing around the page <laughs> and let's get another color happening so I'll use a different brush you've also got round so you've got uh, the angles in different sizes so I find these especially handy um, to change, get that variety of line. And you know, I can be, with acrylic, I can be a bigger area and then I can come up onto my little point. Like this same brush, I could fill in that area of the lip and then it's still fine enough with this little angle tip to do eyelashes. So I can, uh, I don't have to think about changing so often, I just, change the angle of my brush come up onto the tippy toe then you've also got rounds which you need these are best for details but again um, I suppose this is what you think of when you traditionally think of a paintbrush don't you do you think of a round um, so I'm going to let's go I'm gonna go that real yellow gold no oh, I'm always doing gold 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 Let's go this one. We'll go the bronze, the rose gold. So I'll let that activate for a second and just have a look at questions. Um, Wild Rose says, I can only get one brush right now. I combine a lot of watercolour and watercolour pencil in a similar way. Which brush set would you recommend as a starting vac? Um, Arabesque is for, water, uh, for acrylic as well. I would say I'd go, if you're a watercolour person, I would go for 
the pirouette or the on point set. The pirouette set has got more um, brush styles in it. The on point is all rounds, like I'm just about to show you. Um, but it's a very important brush shape. But this also has the filberts, which I don't like so much in acrylic. I love them in a watercolour. So that's like a getting into like a little cat's tongue type brush. You've got your rounds, which are very important. This has got us two sets, two mops in it, which you can use as rounds as well. And you've got the angles, which do what I just did with the angle, the arabesque. These are softer, so they, that's why I think they're better just for watercolour. And watercolour is very gentle on your art supplies because, I mean, gum arabic and the pigments, the only damage you could do is if you stabbed your paints a lot and, like, physically attacked the brushes. Uh, so let me show you this. So you get that lovely swave and then you pirouette, pirouette, pirouette. But again, you've got all of these different situations so you've just got more variety so maybe the pirouette set um, might be better for you if you work at very small scale then I would say get the on point if you like little tiny details and you are a small painter as in brush 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 this will suit you because you've got some little tiny ones in here so if that's the kind of thing, if you love detail, precision, on point. If you're a wild watercolour woman, pirouette. And if you're a, a, a mixed media, acrylic, acrylic as well, that's when I would do arabesque. And if you're all of those things, well, you know what I'm going to tell you. You need all of the things. <laughs> But you can collect them gradually. There's no pressure. You don't have to get them all at once. So while we're here, look at the gorgeous cold. Look at that. Flashing away. Divine. Divine. Oh, I'm just, it's the gold. The golds on the black just make me very happiness person. I'm going to put a little bit of this beautiful rosy colour on here. I might even use a little bit of those two on the cheeks. They look a little bit, compared to the gold, everything looks a bit meh. But these ones in the right little spot, divine. And the right little spot is highlights like this where light is touching the face. They don't really have much colour. They've just, they've, as you can see, very sheer. And these are, uh, one is in the Glamouroon set and one is in the um, Flower Bomb set. Uh, and if you don't have the pigment petals, the other little one that does this sort of thing is in my original watercolours in the Glitzy set. There's a sheer bronze called Flirtatious and it's a very sheer metallic specifically, as is the gold in it. Um, the, it's a, I'll show you, on, where's that piece of paper? It's really sheer, but it's got a little bit of a um, beigey skin tone in it. This is not a watercolour paper, so it's going to look funny on that. And then I'll put this on to show you how sheer that is. And then how she, you might not even be able to see it on the screen yet. Ugh, I shouldn't have used this paper, but anyway, this just doesn't ha doesn't like watercolour. But you'll be able to see um, the shimmer. Oh, I just I'll let it dry for a minute. Um, but if you don't have those and you've got my glitzy palette, you can use this. Is sort of in that same realm. Uh, it's got a little bit more colour to it though. But I'm going to pop a little bit of this on here as well. And that brush was a bit big for that. So it just, just was a bit distinct and I wanted it to be a bit softer. So I'm going to just 
just fill that in so that's just she's got a nice warm color above her eye and I might even bring that color down oh but I don't want it too glistening everywhere So they're the, um, all of the watercolours and the colour library in pans in that big um, vintage paint box there. But can you see the shimmer? This I'm not meant to be using shimmery things today, I suppose. Then again, how could I not? Now it's because of the lights, it's I've got to get the contrast. Okay, if I come this way. So there you can there. See how that shimmer is popping on her cheek? It's popping for me because I'm at this other angle. I'm at that lower angle. I should rather glamorous. Oh no, that's the wrong light. I need this, I think. So that should all be dry now. And I might even use this. This is the fluffy white clouds. Just on that top lip there a little. Oh, and then Angus said I had some more questions. Um, so yeah, so I would say the, yes. Can I answer that for you, Wild Rose? I hope so. Wild Paint Watercolour Woman Pirouette. If you love splish, splash. If you like precision and taking your time, then the on point. Uh, or... If you really want to treat yourself to lusciousness, the Ontua set is gorgeous too. That's that's uh, the other one, but I don't want to I don't want to add to your. Now the whole reason I even bought up any of these things was the uh, I was going to put a wreath on her hair, but I completely got distracted, as usual. So I'm going to use the mop, sorry, round 16, sorry, I just got confused and thought I was with the pirouettes, I'm with the mop. Okay, so I've got Minerva and um, Chimera. So the Chimera was a hybridised monster, it had the head of a lion, a goat popping out of the middle of its body and a snake so at, at for its tail and at the rear of its body so it could bite you, bleat at you and strangle and poison you all at the same time. Terrifying animal. And uh, <laughs> also reminds me of Mission Impossible, the Chimera virus, which Tom Cruise saved us all from. And this is Minerva, because this is from the Roman edition. Minerva is the ancient Roman version of Athena, who was the warrior goddess, the wise goddess. The owl was her, she could turn herself into an owl, or the owl was her little pet assistant, whatever. And even today we think of owls as being the wise owl, and it's because of its association with this goddess. Uh, Athens is named after her. And before we think she's too awesome, she also turned a mortal woman uh, into Medusa, so, and then had her killed and uh, by helping a hero and uh, so the blood wouldn't be on her own hands and then stuck her head on her shield. So, Athena, used to, Athena Minerva used to be in favour, but um, yes, I just can't cope with the, when they're too naughty. So I'm going to give her a little laurel wreath.
So, um, and this will have um, pigment, it will have twinkle in it as well, pigment pebble. I want the leaves to have a bit more body there. I think it'd be a bit finer there. Okay. Can we tell this is a wreath? So the wreath is a symbol of victory. Sometimes it goes all the way around the head, but usually it's just that semicircle. And it's placed on the head of the victor. Uh, or it can be used as a symbol of remembrance. But I've got it in that beautiful green. So this is the Gods and Monsters uh, ink that I've got it in here. So it will have that, it'll gradiate, but it's also got the shimmer in it too. So well, let's just see. So that was the Chimera. Oh, and I've got this beautiful ink on my brush. I don't want to waste it, so I'm just going to grab this journal and pop it in here. And that's a bit too much there. And then that'll just be the start of something. Isn't that a beautiful landscape green? Right, and now I might get a little bit of the Minerva on there too, which is Athena. So the Roman version of her was Minerva. And I'm going to add a little bit of this green in here as well. And let's give her a little bit in the eyes too. Oh. She's off to uh, worship. She's off to schoolies. <laughs> And everyone will worship her. And I'll just add a little bit of that green just to integrate that colour a little bit into the rest of the painting. Whether that green really goes with all these blues and whatnot, I'm not really sure about that. But maybe she's a water goddess. Or she's at a temple by the seaside, something like that. Now we could just say she's finished for now, I think. Uh, now Melissa asks, do you prime all of your um, uh, do you prime all of your paper in your journals? It always looks like your supplies just glide and went perfect on the paper. On my paper, yes, they do glide perfectly because the journal in my the paper in my journals is meticulously chosen to suit the way I work, I guess, um, which is just a way that allows me to use as much mixed media as I can. So the paper that I've got in this journal is just other brands and um, very fancy paper, but it just doesn't suit the way I, every watercolour paper is really different, every paper is different, sorry, I'm putting things away. Every, every paper is really quite different to each other. So they're obviously always going to suit someone. They're probably even created or developed with a particular artist either in mind or directing that. So it's going to suit a particular way of working. And the papers in my journals, because I have a lot of variety, I've got quite a few different papers. So this is levitation. This is my, um, it's really an art card that I've got in black, in colours. It's all the same type of paper. Oops. And in white as well. So I've got multicoloured journals like this one, um, like this one. So this is all one type of fabulous paper that accepts just about everything. So this is this beautiful art card. Although it's technically not a watercolour paper, because it's not sized. Uh, and then I have 
my watercolour papers. There's three different types, but each one is selected for its fabulousness or is made for us for its fabulous, like just for the way that it works. So this is the aquaculture paper. It's thick. Sometimes we just love a thick paper and it's a big, nice, thick, chunky journal. There's also, this is a cotton watercolour paper that has the glitter in it. And um, it's, uh, Paul Rubens a paper, it's just divine. That's the Glittering Prize journal. So always my journals are full of amazing paper because that's what I use. I only use my journals. Well, that's not true. I make them as well. And then I, you hear me whinging about the paper. And then if I have to use paper that's not mine or that I don't trust, um, I can use watercolour gesso or my gessos to turn it into a surface that I trust, which is what I've done here. Because I don't trust this paper. I've had to uh, put down a foundation and that's also what I do when I'm working in a altered book. So, but I love doing this. Um, and but what I'm trying to say is, obviously there are some people that would love whatever that paper is. Like it might be Fabriano Artistico, which, you know, is very, very popular in the mixed media and watercolour, but I just find it hideous for watercolour. I just don't like it. It, do, it, it doesn't suit. It's great for collaging and for uh, acrylic and stuff, but it just do, it's just not my... It's just, not my preference once I discovered other papers. Um, so yes, anyway. And then those things change over time and change depending on what you want to be creating. But this is all gesso on vintage papers because creating on vintage paper is has its own challenges because the paper is delicate, uh, because it's old. And I don't want the text, too much of the text shining through, especially with vintage stories, vintage uh, children's books and things, um, because very often the story that's written there is a little bit not really in keeping with today's uh, our, our modern sensibilities. So uh, I might not necessarily want the story shining through, but I love the whole idea of the. I love the pictures and the word and text peeping through. Maybe not exactly what. Is there so again I'm giving myself a surface that I trust so I'm using the joyful gesso um, I'm or I'm using it as an acrylic and, and then I can keep creating on top of it on top of it on top of it so I'm never ever painting myself into any form of corner I'm always leaving myself as many creative options as I can this is another one of the art cards um, as well with all of the different, this is the best friends journal. Oh, the, like that I need to answer? Hey Heather, is the paper in your newer journals different than, than the original? Um, the only paper change has been in the aquaculture paper. Um, the aquaculture, the, uh, the newer ones have a different, slightly different paper. I think it's even better. Uh, it's just, it's still ultra thick. It's just, it, the paint flows across it. Um, it's really a real balancing act to get paper that will be great for acrylic and watercolour and collaging because uh, and drawing because they all like different things watercolor loves a little bit of grain in the paper it just helps it flow it helps the sizing be applied evenly um, it, the, the watercolor can sort of do its magic whereas drawing really likes smooth paper I find pencils like smooth paper um, and sketching that sort of thing and uh, markers especially like a fast surface so you go it's not too absorbent and acrylic likes uh, 
different things as well. So getting a paper that does everything well means you've got to test a lot of papers and work on a lot of papers. And uh, I adore the aquaculture. My favourite of our watercolour papers though is the Back to the Fuchsia. But it does have a cream um, base. And some people don't like that. So a natural base it is called. Um, the aquaculture has a much whiter base. So colours look brighter on that white base. But I like the cream... I do like the cream paper of the uh, Back to the Fuchsia. And it's called Back to the Fuchsia because the original cover is <laughs> Fuchsia Pink. Um, and just the paper itself is just, uh, it's finer. And oh, I just, I just, I love it. And mm, I love all of them, so I feel a bit mean saying I love this one. I don't really love it more than another because next to me, I've got all of them going all at once plus I haven't even mentioned smooth operator this white card I've got three of these journals going at the side of me because um, they just I adore this paper and how gorgeous is the gold edging <laughs> so some of them have the edging some don't um, it just depends how I feel when I'm designing them just to make that Fancy. So yes, there are different papers, but I say life's too short for crappy paper, and I put a huge amount of effort and thought into all of the papers that are in the journals, and then hmm, can't leave any out. That's the window pane film and the crinkling. Hmm, it's just so divine, and this is levitation which is lets all these colour splits happen and very, very fine, light journal. But this paper, man, can it do a lot of heavy lifting for something that's so fine. It can really um, take a lot of water and blah, blah, blah. It's going to crinkle, it's going to do that thing, but it'll even out, it's okay. Um, oh, I forgot about her, isn't she nice? This is the sketcher size. No, that's not sketcher size, that's... Um, Brush with Fame is the black. That is the new technical fountain pen. We shall get to those. Actually, are they even on my list? I don't think they made it, oh my gosh. We'll do them another day. But, oh, that's... Uh, Lay cake, pens, pencil, and then you've got all these layers shining through. Oh, the journal tattoos. And then also, we do sell them in packs of just the paper. So, why do I do so many things? Because I need them all for myself. We also sell the packs of the paper so you can make your own journals because I, I got sick of making my own journals with other papers that I then had to cover with something. So I may as well be able to make my own journals with my own fabulous paper. So you've got glittering plies, aquaculture, uh, levitation, window pane, smooth operator in the black and the white. I've missed one out. Glittering prize, did I say that? Back to future aquaculture. Um, maybe that is all of them. Uh, and they are available in paper packs with gorgeous covers. And then we also have the journal covers, we have the binding kit, everything. And even the cover is from the little free um, uh, folders that come with some of the art supplies just to get them to you safely like this one that I've got all my stencils in. And our, and our folders are reversible, so you can have them like this, or you can have them like this. And there's three different ones. And you can buy these as a set, so you don't have to sort of wait for the random ones to come through with, depending on what you get. You can just grab them. And there's a beautiful 
holder, which I won't pull out because everything will fall over, but lots of nice things. <laughs> Oh, Penny's here, second night in a row. Well, I'm here every day till Christmas, the Dolly Dolls. Um, oh, Heather's uh, layer cakes are getting their way through customs. They'll get there. Imagine how busy it is before Christmas for everyone, my gosh. <laughs> um, Heather says, uh, the Gods and Monsters inks look amazing. They are amazing. And by original inks, maybe you mean the incredible inks. They're fantastic too. They don't do the splitting. They do a little bit of that sort of stuff on the levitation paper, but they're just a different type of ink. But all inks are fantastic. It doesn't really matter what you've got. Use what you've got. Um, uh, yes, oh, Melissa, I'm um, just... I went to my mum's house yesterday, there was a tea party, and I get my brain gets so excited about, if I go off on a tangent, it gets so excited about the, because I visualise everything as I'm talking about, I get so excited about whatever it is that I'm talking about, or what someone else is talking about, then I completely forget what I was talking about. You may have noticed that, anyway. Um, <laughs> right. Okay, now I'm just looking for more questions. Uh, Heather's saying a journal of all the different papers. There are some technical issues on that. So I have done that in samples, but they're not, there's not as stable as I would like. So that's why I have the paper packs. So you can make the journal of your dreams with all the different papers that you love. And you can always add other papers in, or vintage papers, or other things. So we do have that, but you just have to make it yourself, which I think is even can be even better because you can have a different paper every time, or you can have sections, whatever you want. Fabulous. Okay, well. Uh, oh, Create with Becca says, I love how pigmented Jane's colours are. Yes, we love lots of pigment. Uh, but I also have things that don't, that hold back on pigment on purpose because sometimes uh, we don't want, we want a little bit of control and a layer ability. So things that do that are things like uh, the um, pigments of imagination. They're just softer colours. It's not that they've got less pigment they're less vibrant I suppose is the way to put those and then I do have like in the colour library paints total squirrel rat right? um, there are this is just a little bit more technical but for instance Pride and Prejudice this one I've got the paint key in this is an opera rose um, this one here 20,000 legs is a cobalt turquoise these are single pigment master pigment fancy as fancy from italy the pigments are uh, as of that's where the big pigment markets are so um anyway single so they're, they're like the color is intense the color that comes out is very like full on but sometimes we don't want always the full on colors because then everything becomes very uh, can become overwhelming and they don't sing as loudly anymore or sing that same you know, as if there's just all bright colours. We need some gentleness as well. So that's when we've also got um, pigment mixes and also that allows me to create a specific colour. So for instance, uh, this is the bigger version of the watercolour library, so let's move these. This is what, sometimes it's called a convenience colour, so it's a mix of many different pigments to get the exact colour that I want. So this is just a great beige for a mid skin tone, which is really hard to get in watercolour. And so this is my favourite, and I've got all the others. Um, they're either too orange, they're too yellow, this is beige. And beige. We can make it lighter, we can make it darker. Darker tones are so well covered with your dark umbers and siennas and sepias that the beige, and when you're starting out mixing a beige, it's not easy. So there it is, and it's convenient. That's why it's called a convenient colour. 
Another example is my Secret Garden, a oh, Wind in the Willows Green, which is this beautiful foliage green. And it's kind of soft, it's not a, so if you're doing a landscape, it allows lots of different tones and you can drop in the stronger colours to create more charisma and personality. But we need, sometimes we need something soft to start off with before we add the drama. And we can't get the drama if we don't have the softness. So it's sort of like this painting here. She's, she's being overwhelmed by the neon pink that I added there. So I could spice her up or maybe she's just hiding behind her feathers. Maybe she doesn't, this, this is what she wants. Um, anyway, that was a real squirrel, wasn't it? I can't even remember what the original question was. <laughs> I think it was something about pigment. <laughs> but yes, so I've got the push and pull of different pigments. And then there are amazing things like the pebble pigments, uh, whimsical watercolours, fairy dust. This uses a different type of pigment um, that has the sparkle and the fleck in it. And this does all sorts of different things. In fact, whimsical watercolour are a combo. Um, these are just the fleck so that's why when you add them to the ink they don't really change the colours of the inks they sit there and do their own thing and then I've also got the welcome mat pigments which are a different type of thing altogether as well because they're mixed with shell it's a traditional Japanese or Chinese type of paint so it's a different thing that's these sort of matte ones as well so I just geek out over all of this stuff, not so much the technicality of it, but the potential of what all of these different things do. So that's why there are so many art supplies in my collection, because all of them do something a bit different. Yes? The art vent calendar, I know I've, oh, I think, I think the art vent calendar is on the blog. Let me just quickly check because I can't remember. <laughs> but I think I did put it there the other day. But, oh God, I'm doing a lot of things. No, I didn't, of course I didn't. I will make sure that I, I know, I remember I started to, but I just didn't finish that. So thank you for the reminder, I shall do that. Can you help me remember that, Gus? Yeah. And, um, but it is, in, it is on my Facebook page and it is on my, but that it gets, because there's lots happening on there, it disappears, so I will definitely put it on the blog. And um, I'll create with Becca, loves the pebbles, they're fantastic. Oh, Penny just got her marzipan twists, they're wonderful. Um, Penny wants to say, when are the Egyptian foamies coming? Oh, wouldn't that be fabulous? Oh, I love Egypt. Oh, and we've got another massive Egyptian um, exhibition coming to Australia. We're being spoiled. It's coming from the British Museum. The one I went to, the Ramses one, is it came from Paris, but it's by the Egyptian Department, Supreme Department of Antiquities, or whatever it is called. So it's, and it's from the way it was described, Egyptian hands. So it was from Egyptian excavations. Egyptian people, modern Egyptian people, so rather than in times past. So everything isn't taken off to other museums. I have mixed feelings about that. I feel a bit sad. I understand that things feel like they've been stolen. But equally, just with the modern world and a volcano can pop off. So it's sort of good to have things spread out a little bit. So we... Um, you know, that human heritage is held in multiple places. So, um, you know, if something happens in that local area, there's like zoos, you know, you've got a little bit of lions, tigers and bears just spread out around the world. So if something happened locally, not all is lost. Um, the paint key you can find on the page with the uh, large set. It, it comes as a free gift if you get all of the big watercolour tubes, which I think are all in the best colours. 
Um, so you've got Pride and Prejudice, which is a quinacridone magenta, sorry, Opera Rose. Little Women is quinacridone magenta, it's a master pigment. 20,000 Leagues is a master pigment. Gulliver's Travels is my mix of aqua, divine. Um, why you need pinks and blues, you just do, because they're gorgeous. And also the Painted Veil, which is the beige. And you can get that as a separate issue, or it's a free gift when you get the set of them. So that's how you can find those. And they're in the watercolour section of the website, as is the full colour library with all the um, different creatures. <laughs> oh, Mount Etna, she's going off again, is she? Oh, gosh. I must say, the whole time I was in Japan, when we were staying very near Mount Fuji, and when we were there last time, there were tonnes of earthquakes. But if these things decide to go off, just the way it is. Okay. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, oh, it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, all the exhibitions are pretty cool, aren't they? Um, oh, the new Cairo Museum wasn't quite ready when I went to Egypt. Um, it sounds unbelievable. If the old Cairo Museum was, I just loved it. There were paints there, a little paint set, thousands of years old, and there are the little pigments. Oh, it was just like the little palette. It was, I just loved it so much. Like when I went to Frida Kahlo's house in Mexico City, and her paints are there. Her Frida Kahlo's paints are there. Doop. I touched one of them. Don't tell anybody. Boop. I gave it a little just to touch them. Sorry, did you hang? Oh, it's all good? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Like I said, everything is at janedavenport.com. What was today meant to be about? Oh, no, we did do it. The brush ballet, we celebrated the brushes. And in doing so, we also had to celebrate acrylic paint in general. And if we're celebrating acrylic paint, then we've got to celebrate coloured pencil as well because it's just one of my favourite combos. And a little bit of uh, watercolour and ink as well. And if I get my noggin off the page, look at this. I'm just going to... Uh, so you can see the sparkle. Oops in the eyes and in her little um, oh there we go bam so when you've got oh look at the eyes <gasps> she's looking at us she's wishing us well may the odds be ever in your favor <laughs> oh i've got to watch the new hunger games movie the book was great the new one, okay. So there we go. That's, we started off as the same stencil for both of these and they turned into very different creatures. But they're mirroring each other. And uh, a lot of fun was had along the way. Thank you for your company. And I will be doing another live stream tomorrow. What are we talking about? Oh, we are talking about the colour, the, the colour library, watercolour. Seems so mean to put both sets and the new ones all on one little day, but that's just the way it is if we're just celebrating them. <laughs> As we go, that is how, otherwise I can't fit everything in. I haven't even managed to fit everything in, so I'm doing my best, but they're lots of fun. Penny says, you need your own channel, don't you? Well, we're on it. This is Joan TV right here. <laughs> hey, Didik from Croatia, how are you going? Um, oh, yes, Penny wants to get to the pyramids. Oh. And the Sphinx. The Sphinx. Mm, Dendara. That was my favourite. Floating on the Nile. Looking out, a bit of Roman ruins. Probably a bit of ancient Greece, a bit of ancient Egypt. 
eons, everything except crocodiles and hippos, but I like to imagine a little crocodile sneaking around in there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> okay, my friends, well, hopefully I see some of you tomorrow and when you join me for art event, and I will go and put the calendar up on the um, on my blog. And yeah, like I said, everything is at Jane Davenport. And uh, yeah, go and do some art or dream of art and have a lovely day wherever you are. Bye.